Hey everybody, welcome back. So is it really possible for a snake to go a full year without eating and be okay? And there's a lot of stuff that plays into that. And one of, the, one of the big reasons we wanted to talk about this today is there's always a lot of questions that come in, particularly from newer keepers. You know, I've had my snake for a week, it won't eat. And I've had it, you know, it hasn't eaten in two weeks, hasn't eaten in a month. And our knee-jerk reaction to that is always, well, what's her parameters? What's her heat and humidity like? What's her demeanor like? Are they, you know, scared? Are they frightened and so forth? And uh, those are all things that we need to pay attention to. But I think it helps, um, particularly with newer folks, to really understand a little deeper how the snake's metabolism works, how it's different from ours, and what it is that enables these animals to go that much longer without food. So today, we're going to be taking a little bit of a deep dive into snake metabolism. Whether you're a lifelong keeper or just getting started, help us encourage responsible keeping, conservation, and public education in the interest of keeping our reptiles safe and healthy as we protect them for future generations. You're invited to spend time with us as we experience these awesome animals together on Intrepid Exotics. So I wanted to have Snoop out here for a little while anyway. Uh, this is a carpet python and they're semi-arboreal. It's a really good example of how energetic a nice warm snake can be that's been basking for a couple days. Their metabolism gets up, they start being able to burn that energy, and carpet pythons will burn a lot of energy. She's actually getting ready to eat tomorrow, so perfect timing for her. But I want to put her back, and then, or otherwise I'm not going to be able to focus on talking, because she is all over the place. But um, I'm going to go ahead and put her back, and uh, we'll get into things. So we've all heard the term metabolism, but what does it actually mean? Now, metabolism, simply put, is just how quickly you use the energy that you've got. Now, that can be different if we're talking about a bear that's in hibernation, their metabolism drops way down, as opposed to, say, a hummingbird, who's got a really high metabolism and requires a lot of energy while they're flying around. It's like 80 beats per second or something like that on their wings. It's really amazing. And they require a lot of energy to keep up that activity level. Well, snakes, since they, since their metabolism is exothermic, that means it's drawn from the outside, they can't always control their environment. So, as a way to counter that, they've got the ability to drop their metabolism. They can drop their energy consumption by like 70%, which means <clears throat> during areas where they don't have access to heat, in order to stay alive, they can reduce the demand um, on their system. So that allows them to go for extended periods of time without eating because their activity level is so low. But since they're exothermic and they generate their metabolism through their outside environment, they've got three ways of doing that in general. Um, there's a couple more that I won't go into just for simplicity's sake, but there's conduction, convection, and radiation. And those are the things that we manage when we're keeping them in captivity. I've got a really good example of all three right here. If you look in the Tegu enclosure, I keep this stone down here because the radiation from this light heats that stone. Now when the animal goes and lays on it, that heat is conducted from the stone directly to the animal. And so they've got the heat coming in from the bottom with the light, the radiation is heating them from the top. And that's where they draw their heat to run their metabolism. And then convection is the heat that's on that stone. As it rises, it warms the air around it and warms the enclosure as well. So you've got all three times of types of heat transfer running right there. And we need to have those for our reptiles. And like we said, since snakes can't control their environment, they have evolved the ability to drop their metabolism. So their need for energy reduces. They've got certain thresholds that they've got to stay behind. They've got to stay between. You, know, you can't let your snake get too cold or all of its processes will shut down and it'll die. You can't let it get too hot or else it'll overheat and it'll die. So there's always that sweet spot that we've got to keep them in. And that can vary from species to species. But that's, in a nutshell, what metabolism is and how it works in regards to our snakes. Now, how long can they go? Well, I've had 
two of my snakes here that have went the longest periods of time without eating. My female ball python went five months without eating, and my male reticulated python went six months, close to six months without eating. And it's one of those things where it can really stress you out when your animal's not eating. And like I said, we've got to talk about their environment and make sure that their environment's on point. But if everything's good to go there, then it's natural sometimes for some of our animals to go off food for a week, for a month, for two months. Um, like I said, it varies between species. The more active, more energetic snakes are going to need to eat more often. You know, if we're talking about something like my, um, my two rough scale green snakes that I've got upstairs. They're insectivores and they need to eat much more frequently because they're always expending that much more energy as opposed to say my reticulated pythons, my Burmese pythons who will sit here and just bask or soak or whatever the case may be, they expend a little bit less energy. Plus they're larger and they eat larger meals. So that is a lot to be taken into account too. The point being is that our snakes are naturally evolved in order to go extended periods of time without eating for a whole myriad of reasons. Now, if your snake is going off food, you want to be alert. You want to be aware. You want to really keep an eye on them and make sure that you're not seeing anything like really rapid weight loss and things like that because there can be other things going on. You know, if a snake's sick, a lot of times they won't eat either. So that's not something that you rule out and automatically just say, well, my snake can go a year without eating. I'm not going to worry about it. When they do come off food, you need to watch them. And if they come off for extended periods of time and their body looks like it's starting to change because of it, you know, it's a really good time to get that animal into the vet and find out what's going on because it could be something else. Keeping snakes is a lot like keeping an infant. You know, for those of you that have had children, you bring them home, you know, they start sneezing and a week or two later, and everybody loses their mind. You gotta hurry up and get to the doctor. My kid's sick. Oh my God, what's going on? And we all tend to be hyper vigilant about those things. And a lot of us can be that same way about our animals. But we just, we need to understand that there's a lot of different things that go into um, a snake's health, how they're gonna react, how well they're gonna eat. And we don't rule out anything. We always pay attention, we stay open to what's going on, and we always look for signs. But I think it helps, really, to understand that there's more to it than just feeding schedule. Um, more to it than just environment. Sometimes snakes will go off food. And I think understanding that and understanding how their metabolism works goes a long ways towards kind of putting some folks' minds at ease about, um, you know, what condition their animal's in, make people feel a little bit more comfortable with okay you're not gonna eat this week I got it you know some things you can do if you've got multiple snakes in your collection is if you know you've got an animal that's not eaten that hasn't eaten for the last week or two is thaw out one less prey item you know offer it to them first if they don't take it give it to one of your other animals and just continue feeding if that animal's not gonna eat you're not gonna force feed it so that way you're not wasting prey items and so forth. If they take it, great. You thaw out another one for the animals that you, that you know are eating. Um, <clears throat> and especially when you get into larger snakes, that can get kind of pricey. If you thaw out animals for, or thaw out prey for all your animals, and you've got two snakes that refuse a six pound rabbit, you know, that stuff adds up after a while. <laughs> now you gotta figure out what you wanna do with a six pound thawed out rabbit that you can't refreeze and, and feed them later, so. So I hope this kind of shed light a little bit on some of the other considerations if you're having a problem getting your snake to eat you know i really encourage folks this isn't in any way meant to discourage you from asking questions really encourage people to you know if you get any questions if you're unsure about something there's a lot of groups jump in ask people there's a lot of experienced keepers out there that can help guide you kind of help put your mind at ease maybe help you um, notice something that you hadn't noticed that may be a cause but um you know, every little bit of information helps. And just understanding the fact that snakes' metabolisms work so much differently than ours and they're able to go longer periods of time without food may go a long ways towards, like I said, putting your mind at ease about it and so forth. So, hope that helped a little bit. Don't forget, guys, get down, like the video, get down in the comments if you've got any questions or 
you know, concerns, anything like that. If there's anything else you'd like to see in the future, by all means, let me know. And then get subscribed to the channel so you can catch it. And <clears throat> real quick, before I go, U.S. Arc, uh, the most recent uh, alert that came out from U.S. Arc is about Oregon. And that is, there's legislation on the table to um, ban animal education programs. Uh, there's a whole lot to be said about that, but I really encourage you guys. I've always got the US Arc YouTube channel down in the description. I've got their website down there. Get down there, read through the alert, see what's going on. Jump in, send emails, do what you can, because we've really got to keep an eye on what's going on so that we can maintain our ability to keep these animals and educate ourselves and educate others about them uh, and really enjoy just keeping these reptiles that we love. So you guys have an outstanding day. And I will see you next time on Intrepid Exotics.